I'd like to call the 11th regular meeting of the Sheboygan Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. No matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. Thank you. Would you please call the roll for the meeting? There are 15 present. Alderman Damro is excused. We have some scouts with us from Boy Scout Troop uh, 818 from Christ, uh, Christ Child Academy. <coughs> Boys, would you please step forward and help us in leading the Pledge of Allegiance. The first one coming up is Nicholas Wekela and Alex Cunningham is with him. Let's stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go on to the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Thank you for that motion and support. The minutes are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please, uh, let's see, we can just do this on a voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, there are no resignations and no new council appointments. And the next we'll go on to confirmation of appointments uh, for the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet, city attorney. Uh, this is Mike Vanderstein, Mayor, Julie Koth, Alderperson, Henry Capitillo, Gateway Neighborhood Association, Steve Benish, Gateway Alternate, Greg Liebig, Ellis Historical Neighborhood Association, Ellen Murphy, Ellis Neighborhood Alternate, Chad Pelichick, Director of Planning and Development, Chris Domagalski, Chief of Police, Diane Wolchensky, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride President, all terms expiring 4-30-2015, signed by the Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Is there any discussion and confirmation of appointments? N hearing none, all those in f flavor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? They pass. <coughs> Next, we'll go on to a special presentation by the Sheboygan Fire Department. Please welcome Chief Mike Romas. Somebody's working on me. Hello, Council. Do you have the pictures? Next one, please. No pictures, just okay. words. Okay, no, you know what? Don't even show it. Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor, for inviting me here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, he asked me to come and talk to you about the fire department, what we're doing right now, and where we stand at this moment. So, um, would you like it up or not? No. Okay. If not, if there's no pictures. No pictures. No pictures, okay. Um, I just want to bring up a couple things that are important to me and I just want to let you know where we are right now. Uh, first and foremost, I want to talk to you about the employees of the Sheboygan Fire Department. Uh, I have an outstanding staff, all the way from command to officers to my drivers, uh, firefighters, paramedics. They're outstanding individuals and it takes a great deal of time and effort to even get on the fire department. Our newest hire, uh, Jeff Granke, an outstanding individual. But not only are they outstanding people, they're very much leaders in the community. I'm sure everybody here knows somebody in the fire department. And I have members of my staff and of my uh, department that are um, uh, Sheboygan County, um, not aldermen, but uh, <coughs> supervisors. I have a supervisor on my staff. I have people that are coaches. Um, they take leadership roles in their churches and their schools. They run daycares, they do all kinds of things, and they're just phenomenal people, and they're leaders in the community. So everybody here, all the department heads know that our most important asset is our employees, and uh, Sheboygan Fire Department has outstanding employees. Number two, I wanted to talk to you about um, the quality and quantity of the work that we do. Uh, as you know, budgets are down. We're down from we, where we were maybe eight years ago or so, seven, eight years ago, uh, drastically. And yet, we've taken on the ambulance service and increased our service to the citizens of Sheboygan, even though we've had, we have less money in our operating budget. And I think that's outstanding. We've taken on the ambulance service, which has provided revenue for us, and we added four people when that happened, but since then, we've lost four people. We're at 
full-time equivalents or <clears throat> staff that I have. And it's the same thing as it was eight years ago before the ambulance started. So our people in the fire department are doing more with less, just like you asked of them. And um, they enjoy their jobs. Firefighters are on 24 seven. They're on all the time. I live in a neighborhood, everybody knows I'm the fire chief. They all know that if something happens, if there's a fire or a heart attack or a problem, they can come to me, to my house, knock on the door, anytime, day or night, and I'll be there for them. Just like everybody else in my department would be. No matter who asked or what they needed, we'd be there for them. And everybody knows that, so we're always on. And we enjoy that we're held to a higher standard, so I wanted you to know that too. Third, um, we are, are very efficient in our department and that's a credit to you and to this council and to the leadership of the city. Um, they've, you've asked us to do more with less than we have, just like everyone else in the, in the city has, all the departments have. And we found ways to cut our budget, we found ways to do things differently, and we've been doing it for many years, and uh, we've gotten really, really good at it. <laughs> I came from a department that was bigger, where this wasn't such an issue. Here it's a very big issue, maybe the biggest issue. And our members have risen to the challenge and we found ways to cut, but it's because you asked us to and, and demanded it of us. And we are very lean and efficient right now. So I, want you to, I wanted you to know that also. Um, the fourth thing I just wanted to tell you about was um, the fact that uh, we do have some challenges coming up in the future. And They've been discussed in finance and uh, public protection and safety. We've discussed these things. But um, when budget time comes up, everybody focuses on that. But 94.5% of my budget is, but is salaries and benefits. So I control very, really, very little of my budget. Of that 5.5%, now we're talking my operating budget and my line items. So when, when, um, when the budget comes around, now everybody's looking at those line items and they've either been cut or frozen for the last seven or eight years. So we're kind of borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Leadership in the city listens to me. You know, if we, we're, we need a, a new roof on two of my firehouses, they're working with me to try to get that to happen. Um, apparatus needs to be replaced. Equipment needs to replace it, be replaced. It gets outdated, it breaks down, it gets old. Just like everything in your homes. And eventually you have to, you have to get things taken care of. And we're looking at that, but that's a challenge. The other one is my department's gonna change over soon. Um, in the next year and a half, not quite, um, I'm guessing around 15, 18% of my department is going to retire, and it's not because I'm here, okay? It just happens to be the timing of it. Um, I have a lot of people that have 25, 30 years in the department, they love their jobs. You know, what if they could stay young forever? I think they'd stay forever, I really do, because they have so much satisfaction from what they do. But we all come to that time, we have to retire eventually. It's a, we always say it's a young person's job to be a firefighter, and it is. To go in and fight fires and things, is, it just takes, uh, it takes a great deal of uh, effort and um, a lot of work. And uh, you have to be young to be able to sustain that, it's not easy. So um, I'm gonna have a big turnover and my goal, my challenge is to make sure that those people that are young are going to be uh, prepared when they do take those leadership positions and um, that they enjoy their jobs and that everything is there that needs to keep them safe and able to do their job to the highest level that they can to serve the citizens of Sheboygan. So that's about all I wanted to say. I want to thank you again for um, listening to me. Everybody here listens. They look at me and I believe that they're listening to me and trying to put themselves in my position just like I try to put myself in your position. And I admire what you do. I went to a course in Boston uh, at the Harvard University uh, Kennedy School for State and Local Government. Half the class was elected officials at a local, county, state, even a federal level. We had a couple of judges and things from the federal level. And I'd say about half my class was people like myself, department heads, assistant department heads, things like that. And you network with these people and you listen to the things that they have to do the things that you do, and I developed a big <coughs> admiration for those people. How it just, it was amazing and what, what they do and, and how much they care to even take these positions. So thank you for that, and unless anybody has any questions, I always wanted to do this, Mayor, may I? Does anyone in the council have any questions? Does anyone in the council have any questions? Does anyone in the council have any questions? <laughs>
Hearing none, I think I'm done. <laughs> Hearing I'm, is closed. I'm always available. Thanks. I'm always available for any questions you want. I'll sit down with you. I'll talk to you honestly and openly. I'll give you everything, even if it's something I don't want to tell you. It's gonna, I'll tell you what it is, and I won't lie to you. So help you make an educated decision for the budget. And thank you very much for having me, Mayor. Thank you very much for that presentation, Chief. We'll go on to uh, public forum. Uh, there's no one this evening. Okay, next is mayor's announcements. I just want to remind people that there's going to be election for the Board of Water Commissioners at our next council meeting on uh, September 15th, and you can contact the clerk's office if you might be interested in that position. Uh, next is a hearing. Uh, this hearing is uh, held this evening with regards to the proposed ordinance creating a commuter impacted parking on the east and west sides of North 11th Street between North Avenue and School Avenue. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Please come forward. <clears throat> and can I have your name, please? Ducati. And your address? 2706 North 11th Street. Okay, go ahead. And I'm so happy I wrote this down because looking at you now, I never would have made it through. But first I want to say to Chief Romas, I work at Aurora ED Department, and your EMTs are outstanding, professional, and wonderful to work with. So that you, you're not saying more than what they are. So I live on the north. I'm, I'm also going to test your direction. So I hope you can stay with me because I'm a lot of north, east, west, south, but stay with me here. I live on the northwest corner of 11th and North Avenue. I have the former Maitland Apartments, and I call them that because I think you can maybe reference that, um, and North High School to the north of me, and I have Urban Middle School to the west of me. I am sandwiched between both schools, thus I've been able to observe the fiasco at both start and release times. Just this morning, I watched the confusion called, caused by the installation of a new four-way stop on 12th and North Avenue. Traffic coming from the east on North Avenue, traveling west on North, North Avenue, formed a long lane going west, along with a second lane, which was formed at the curb for drop-off. So you, the, the left lane assumed that these cars were parking, when in essence they were only dropping off and trying to work themselves back into the left lane of traffic. What I observed was the left lane figured they had the right of way to make a right turn on 12th Street while they turned right in front of a vehicle trying to get back into the lane. So no one knew what anyone was doing there this morning. Um, okay, this certainly did not make a safer crossing for the students as it was intended to do. Now, add to the confusion, and I'm getting to 11th and North Avenue, we have parked cars all the way from North High to North Avenue on the west side of the street, which is your proposed two-hour parking. <coughs> you have North students when school is released you have these students trying to get into the lane of traffic and make a right turn on 11th and North Avenue, or they're trying to go across 11th and North Avenue or make a left turn. With the parking that is already there, only one lane can be formed. So it doesn't ease traffic to make a right turn onto North Avenue. With the two-hour parking, that would ease up some of that, and two lanes could be formed on 11th Street going south to the 11th and North Avenue intersection. Um, I also observed what you have with the additional stop sign 
today. You have release of the school. The traffic was backed up from North High or School Avenue to 11th and North Avenue from 10th Street West to 12th Street. No one was observing an open intersection to let traffic cross over 11th Street. So what you had was everything blocked. Now, without the two-hour parking, you're not going to have a lane for turning right onto North Avenue either. So it, it <coughs> basically is pretty chaotic now. Now, on a personal level, last year when we had a snowstorm, students parked my two-car driveway in. Now, certainly, they cannot see that that is a driveway because of the snowstorm. But if you had looked 15 to 20 feet to your right, you would have seen two garage doors. By the time I was able, being a second shift worker, by the time I was able to get out there and plow the end of my driveway, it had already been replowed several times, iced over, and that ice never melted until spring. So my access from my driveway, I had to create my driveway butts up against an alley, which is also used as a roadway from urban to get back on to 11th Street. So I had to create an access from my front driveway so that I could back out of my garage, back forward, back backwards, get into the alley, and get out. Now, if there was two-hour parking, I would have had an opportunity of window to get out there and plow that open. Um, well, I had called Dan Stengel and asked for assistance from North High, which I didn't get. So basically, I was plowed in until spring came. So my case would be, if you had the two-hour parking, that would allow a right turn from 11th Street onto North Avenue. If there is opposition from people in the Maitland apartments, I guess I would ask that you consider from the alley access that I was talking about to North 11th Street, at least have a two-hour parking so that would kind of free up some of that distance and still have the right turn lane. I hope I made some sense. A lot of direction. But I see its benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Please come forward. <coughs> Can I have your name, please? Yes, my name is Barbara Minster. And your address, Barb? And I reside at 2738 North 11th Street. OK, you may go ahead. Thank you for the information, Mrs. Cotty, because you can cut me short. But all as I'm saying to everyone is today was an example for me because if I was given the opportunity to park in front of my condominium and I had a sticker on my car, I would not have been able to park in front of my, my condominium on the east side or the west side. It didn't matter. The traffic, the students had us parked in. I guess what I'm recommending to everyone is that the city work with the school district. And I want people to consider that our students today have a privilege of driving to and from school, and they do. It's a privilege for them. So why don't you get together with the school district and encourage them to have those students park in the parking lot. I recognize the fee is $25, possibly more now. I don't know. But I am saying we need to work together. And this needs to be not only a city issue, but I believe we can work with the school district and quietly resolve this. My final thought is, if you do decide to give residents a sticker, give, a to, give us to it for a free
charge. Just give us a sticker. We are residents of this community. We are taxpayers likewise. And I really don't believe that the <coughs> $6 should be necessary as a resident of and a taxpayer of, the, of this wonderful community. And that's really all I have to say. So thank you. Thank you, Barb. Is there anyone else that would like to be heard on this issue? <coughs> Is there anyone that would like to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is closed. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda as item 3.2 th through 3.10. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I move to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions, ordinances, and substitute ordinances upon their passage. Second. Hank, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Sorry, my internet connection isn't working. Is that would be an aye? So I would vote aye. Okay. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Thank you. Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Next is report of officers. Item four point one through four point three will be referred to various committees. <coughs> Under resolutions, five point one is a resolution by Alderman Hammond accepting a conditional gift from the estate of Carol Bootson. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please go ahead. Thank you very much. I'd move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. The resolution is before us. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing entering into a contract for the construction slash installation of a sanitary sewer and water main in Weedon Creek Road. Alderman Hammond. Actually, it's Alderman Heidemann. Heidemann. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I need to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any more uh, objection to suspension? Seeing none, please go ahead. And we, we have to have the submissions. There's only a short period of time that we can get this work done. We needed to get the contracts. We have, dis we have discussed it at Public Works. So I, I put the resolution out of pa up on its passage. Second. second. You have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is item 5.3, a resolution by Alderman Heidemann authorizing entering into a contract for the cracked ceiling of various asphalt streets throughout the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor. And again, this is the same situation where we've got a contract with somebody wants, we want to get these things signed, these, these uh, uh, projects started, and there's only a limited amount of time that we could do that. So. Thank you for we'll those comments. Resolution on, on, upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the uh, resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 5.4 and 5.5 will lie over. <coughs> Item 5.6 and 5.7 will both be referred to various committees. Next is reports of committees. Item 6.1 is a RC by finance to whom was referred RO number 109 of 1415 by the Director of Planning and Development and recommends approval of the 2015 City of Sheboygan Tourism Budget Request from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce for room tax, profit, and loss. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. The motion is before us. Is there any discussion to accept and adopt? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Item 6.2 is an RC by salary and grievances to whom was referred charter order number ordinance rather number two of 1415 by Alderman Carlson and recommends filing the documents and providing the, that provide for the appointment of the city attorney in lieu of the current method of election by the voters to such office. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept and adopt to file this uh, resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion is before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Mary Lynn? Aye. Should have registered. Just did. Okay, thanks. thanks. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by salary and grievances to whom was referred resolution number 58 of 1415 by Alderman Donahue and recommends authorizing the Human Resources Director to contract with Diversified Benefit Services for the provision of insurance benefit consulting services. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that the resolution be, excuse me, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion is before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by law and licensing pursuant to RO number 76 of 1415 recommending denying a taxi cab driver's license number 0450 based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant con convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, is Peter Regas? Oh, sorry. Is Peter Regas here this evening? <clears throat> He's not here. We did invite him two separate occasions, and he did not appear. Any other discussion? Seeing <coughs> none. Will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Next is item 6.5, an RC by law and licensing recommending that RO number 90 of 1415 deny a beverage operator's license of 0484 based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion. Under discussion. Is Alton Lucas here this evening? He's not here. Um, same thing with him. We invited him two separate occasions and he did not appear. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 through 6.10 well, are all related to the, um, the budget for 2015. Those will lie over. Item 7 is ordinances. 7.1 is an it will be um, referred to public works. Uh, under matters laid over, 8.1 is, is RC number 142 of 1415 by Public Protection and Safety, reporting that the uh, documentary evidence by the city engineer pertaining to General Ordinance number 22 of 1415 and RC number 110 of 1415, creating commuter impacted parking on the east and west sides of North 11th Street between North Avenue and School Avenue does meet all the necessary criteria to be eligible. Um, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Second. 
I'm sorry, Alderman, Susan. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, could somebody give me a definition of computer impacted parking? I wasn't able to attend the- uh, Commuter, I'm sorry. Commuter? Uh, My mistake. Impacted parking, I wasn't able to attend the committee meeting and the document didn't make it real clear to me, so could I get a definition of that from somebody? Thank you. Go ahead, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Essentially what it is is that the uh, residents along those streets will pay $6 a year for a sticker to be allowed to park on that street. Otherwise, um, I believe it's two-hour parking, Ryan. Otherwise, it's two-hour parking. Uh, <coughs> yes, we did from Alderman Lassard. Okay. Right, is there any other discussion? If I Alderman if, Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I understand the, the necessity of doing this and um, you know, and with the commuter, I guess the one concern I would have would be the six dollar fee. I know to many, most people, a lot of, let's say, well, that's just a nominal fee. But um, you know, for one or two vehicles, I'm questioning whether we need to charge six dollars. Um, wondering if it wouldn't make sense to charge six or nothing for the first two vehicles, and then you know, six for each vehicle after that. I'm not sure where the six dollars was arrived from, um, but I just uh, maybe want to take a look at that. Thank you. Alderman, City Attorney, could you answer that question? Um, I can't say where it comes from other than it's in the ordinance that it's $6 and it's been that way for forever. But So this uh, is common in other areas we have this type yes, of parking? Yes, yes. Okay. And I, I think part of the rationale is that uh, otherwise if it was available to everybody in every neighborhood for nothing, you'd probably get a lot more requests for impacted parking permits so that people could feel that they could park in front of their own house, uh, you know, without any additional charge. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you. I, I don't think, you know, I, I can't speak necessarily for the reasonableness of it, but $6 per vehicle per year, you know, is not really an excessive amount, I don't think. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess if we could try to open the floor to Ryan and maybe have him uh, explain <coughs> the process that's involved with permits, what we're trying to solve here, the actual problem that we're trying to address. I know this is something that's been discussed in that area for several years now. If Ryan would be willing to come up and just explain the process he's gone through to get to this point, um, and then also, like I said, explain what residents are gonna be eligible for that, the uh, permit and the exemptions and so on. There's no objection. Ryan Sasma, would you please step forward? So I guess the question is, you're wondering how we got to the point here with commuter impact parking and what it is. Um, commuter impact parking, when you, how you start is you start with a traffic study and you check it, you check it all for several weeks. You check it like once a day or three or four times a week. If over two thirds of the traffic parked on that street are from residents that don't live there, and in this case, obviously it's probably North High students, it meets the commuter impacted parking. And the residents that do live there, is, as was explained by Alderman Carlson, is if you live there, you pay the $6, you can park there um, longer than two hours. But the issue is, it's, it's just the neighborhood just gets packed tight from, from North High. So. Any questions of the Alderman, <laughs> Alderman Mayor, Dassler? If I can, if I can follow so, up. Go ahead, you can Thank finish. You. Um, can you explain the, the permit process? Who is going to be eligible for permits? Are students going to be uh, eligible to pay $6, or is, is it restricted to only the households that live on those specific blocks? And how does that process work? And also, I guess, if you can explain the $6 fee, it seems to be, I guess, uh, a little bit of an unknown, because I don't, I don't see a $6 fee in the ordinance itself. Is, does that, is that part of our commuter parking program throughout the city, that I'm just not seeing that, and it's in a different ordinance? I believe it is in the ordinance. I know the other areas we've done, it's always been $6. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty uh, positive that it's, it's in the ordinance. Um, how, it, how you would get the stickers, you would go, you go to the police department and you would just show that you live on that street, therefore you're eligible for a ticket. I mean, you're eligible to get the sticker. And if you don't live on the street, then you're, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have the, the, the proof that you live, that you have a house or a home on the street. Alderman Dassler. That adjusts my question, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Alderman Carlson. Thank you. Um, I you just want to go through the process and how you contacted all, all the residents in this area and um, the response you got and how many people actually um, came, got back to you. 
Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, we did the, the request came in. We did we did the study. It met it met all the criteria in the in, in the ordinance for commuter impacted parking. But part of it is you have to send out a letter to all the residences on that street. And there's a total of 35 letters we sent out to everybody. I sent it out July 22nd. I believe I gave them a week or two to respond to me, either by email or phone call or by letter, telling me if you're in favor of it, uh, if you're not in favor of it. And in the letter it said, if I do not hear from you, um, I'll take that as a, as a positive that you are in favor of the parking. And I, from from that, my letter, I got four. I got four responses. Three were positive, yes, they want, and one was no. We we didn't. They didn't want commuter impacted parking. But like Thank I said in the letter, I was pretty specific. If I don't hear from you, I take that as a as a yes. Okay, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is the two hour parking something new up in that area now? Uh, yeah, it is actually up in that area. That's the only commuter impacted parking that is going to be if the ordinance is passed. Okay, so right now it's not two hour, but it will be. But then the residents will be able to buy the sticker and park there all day if they if they if they need be. That's correct. Okay, thank That's you. Correct. And uh, let's see, I think we've got everybody. Then I also like the uh, city attorney to make some comments about the ordinance and what's in there on the fee. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, perhaps to address uh, Alderman Van Ackman's question, uh, when I was speaking about the ordinance, I wasn't speaking about this specific general ordinance, but it's in our municipal code, and the fee section is, well, the whole impacted parking or residential daytime parking privileges section runs from section 118-191 through 118-220, and it has uh, factors that the committee and the council needs to consider uh, the procedure for designating, and talks about the fee of $6 a year. Uh, and one of the factors to be considered by the committee and the council is on the fee is speaks of the desire and need of two thirds of the residents for residential permit parking and their willingness to bear the administrative costs in connection therewith. So really the $6 is to cover a little bit of the administrative cost in issuing stickers and, and uh, managing you know, who's on the street and, and uh, doing all the uh, studies and so forth. Uh, but uh, this, this ordinance has been in place for a long time. I can't think of, uh, I think there are several other impacted parking areas in the city. I can't identify specific ones, and maybe Ryan can, but the, uh, it's, it works in cases where, you know, if it's near the hospital where you've got a lot of employee parking on the street, or here in the case of a school, you've got kids parking on the street, and it's unlimited parking, so they park on the street rather than having to pay to park in the parking lot and so forth. So it's designed to alleviate some of that so that the residents can have some, uh, some relief. Thank you for that explanation, Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you. Just a real quick question, Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, is this the only area we're looking at doing this in that North High area, or are there other streets that are under review at this point? Um, for this very same issue. No, this is this is the only block because it's the only communication that came in at PP or public protection and safety. It's the only block we looked at. Right. And answers uh, Steve McLean's question. The other two big areas is over by Fifth of New York, uh, down by the county building. That's all impacted parking, and also um, over by Aurora by Sixth and North. That's all commuter impacted parking. Very just just like this will be. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Did you have a comment or yes. question? Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the reason that this came about was I was contacted by a constituent uh, who happens to live on 11th Avenue. He is a, uh, a relatively new parent and new to the neighborhood, works third shift, and he would come, you know, by the time he would get back home uh, from work, it would be, you know, after 8 o'clock in the morning, and he wouldn't have anywhere to park. And uh, he'd have to park two or three blocks away and uh, then have to... Um, if it later in the day he was going to take his newborn out to, and run errands or take her to the doctor, whatever he had to do, he had to take bundle her up in the winter time and take walk two or three blocks away to get to his car, and you know, and it became just a, a real hassle. So uh, he came to me and asked me you know, what you know what we can do, um, and that's I talked with Ryan, and, and this was a solution. If it met the criteria, we would look at it and see. Um, I also have. Uh, three kids that are recent graduates from North High School, and at the time uh, they graduated, the fee was $35 a year to park in the lot. And the only time I ever saw the lot full 
was uh, in the winter when a third of the lot was used for snow piles that they didn't haul away. So um, it was never full when, when I was there, so, or when my kids were there, I should say. So that's kind of the, the genesis and how this started and was impacted. And um, there, he did show up to the PPS meeting and he did address the committee and spoke uh, in, in favor of, of some type of resolution to his problem, and this is what came about. And Ryan, I do believe, is, are we looking at it on 7th in North by the hospital too? Wasn't uh, there some complaints there too about parking? I know, I know there was some, it was, it was brought up, but no, but no communication's been brought in yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the court please call the roll for passage on 8.1? 14 eyes, one no. Thank you, motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. Uh, document 9.1 is a resolution by Alderperson Hammond authorizing an application to the Wisconsin Coastal Management Program for a wave, surge, and hydraulic modeling study for the Harbor Center Marina. That'll be referred to the Finance Committee. <coughs> Excuse me. 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Aye.